In the uterus at the secretory phase, the normal implantation of the blastocyst takes place in the endometrium along the anterior or posterior wall. Also, the implantation and growth of the virtualized ovum may occur outside the uterine cavity in a condition known as ectopic pregnancy. Hi, this is Adil Hajjai from The Anatomist. In this channel, we are helping medical students to understand and enjoy human anatomy. If you are new here, consider subscribing. According to the Canadian Medical Association Journal, ectopic pregnancy is a life and fertility threatening condition that is commonly seen in Canadian emergency departments. It remains a significant cause of maternal death, accounting for about 4% of the approximately 20 annual pregnancy-related deaths in Canada. Despite the high frequency of this serious condition, early detection can be challenging. In up to 50% of the women with ectopic pregnancy presenting to an emergency department, the condition is not identified at the initial medical assessment. The incidence in the United States has increased dramatically in the past few decades, from 4.5 per 1,000 pregnancies in 1970 to 19.7 per 1,000 pregnancies in 1992, and still counting. Ectopic pregnancy may occur at any place in the abdominal cavity, ovary, or uterine tube. However, 95% of the ectopic pregnancy occur in the uterine tube, most of which are in the ampulla. In the abdominal cavity, the zygote is attached to the peritoneal lining of the rectouterine cavity, and it may also be attached to the peritoneal covering of the intestinal tract or the omentum. Sometimes the zygote develops in the ovary itself, forming what is known as primary ovarian pregnancy. In the case of the uterine tube, the ectopic pregnancy usually develops from no longer than six to eight weeks before the tube ruptures. Rupture of the uterine tube or tubal abortion results in severe hemorrhage. The blood flows down into the rectouterine pouch or Douglas pouch or into the uterovesical pouch. Those are folds of the peritoneum posterior and anterior to the uterus respectively. The blood may rapidly ascend to the abdominal peritoneal cavity, causing tenderness and severe abdominal pain. Irritation of subdiaphragmatic peritoneum that's supplied by the phrenic nerve C345 may cause referred pain to the shoulder skin, which is supplied by a nerve that has common roots, the supraclavicular nerve C3 and 4. The patency of the uterine tube may be assessed radiographically by hysterosalpinography, which is an X-ray procedure used to view the inside of the uterus and uterine tube by injecting a radiopaque material. For better understanding, let's expose some anatomical facts of the uterus and uterine tubes. First, the uterus. The uterus is a hollow pear-shaped organ with a thick muscular wall situated in the pelvic between the urinary bladder and uterovesical pouch anteriorly and the rectum and rectouterine pouch posteriorly. It's mobile and its position varies with distinction of the urinary bladder or the rectum. In nulliparous adults, it measures 8 cm long, 5 cm wide and 2.5 cm thick. It consists of three main parts, fundus, body and cervix. The cervical canal communicates with the cavity of the uterine body through the internal os and with the vagina through the external os. Regarding the anatomical position of the uterus, in most women, the position is referred to as antiversion, antiflexion. Let me explain it more. When the long axis of the uterus is bent forward on the long axis of the vagina, this is referred to as antiversion. And when the long axis of the body of the uterus is bent forward at the level of the internal os with the long axis of the cervix, this is referred to as antiflexion. However, in 10 to 15% of women, the uterus is bent backward on the vagina and on the cervix. So it lies in the rectouterine pouch. It is referred to as retroversion, retroflexion position. Structurally, the muscular wall or the myometrium is thick, made up of smooth muscles supported by connective tissues. And the mucous membrane lining the uterine cavity is the endometrium. From puberty to menopause, the endometrium undergoes extensive changes during the menstrual cycle in response to ovarian hormones. The uterus is supported by the levator and eye muscle and by the condensation of pelvic fascia attached to the cervix, which form three important ligaments. Transverse cervical ligament or cardinal ligament, pubocervical ligament, 
sacrocervical ligaments. In addition to these major supporters, the uterus got extra support from the peritoneal fold called broad ligament and the round ligament, which is a remnant of the embryonic gibberniculum, there are lax structures and clinically are considered to play a minor role in uterus support. The broad ligaments are double layer fold of peritoneum that extends across the pelvic cavity from the lateral boards of the uterus to the lateral pelvic walls. Superiorly, the two layers form the free edge. Inferiorly, the layers separate to cover the pelvic floor. Posteriorly, the ovary is attached to the posterior layer by the mesoovarium, and lateral to it, part of the broad ligament forms the suspensory ligament of the ovary, and between the uterine tube and the mesoovarium, part of the broad ligament called the mesosalpings. The round ligament of the uterus extends between the superior lateral angle of the uterus through the inguinal canal to the subcutaneous tissue of the labia majora and is considerably stretched during pregnancy. The round ligament is the one that helps keep the uterus antiverted anti-flexed position. Second, the uterine tube. There are two uterine tubes or fallopian tubes, each about 10 cm long and lying in upper border of the broad ligament. They connect the uterine cavity to the peritoneal cavity in the ovarian region. The uterine tube consists of four parts. Number one, the infundibulum is the most lateral part, funnel shaped. The free edge of it has finger-like projections known as fimbriae trapped over the ovary. Number two, the ampulla is the widest part of the tube and it's usually the site where fertilization of the ovum occurs. Number three, the isthmus is the narrowest part of the tube and the most medial part. Number four, the intramural part that pierces the uterine wall. The main function of the uterine tube, besides being a site of the fertilization, it serves as a canal for the sperm's travel to the ovum in the first place, and it provides nourishment for the zygote and transport it to the uterine cavity. Regarding the blood supply, both the uterus and the uterine tube receives their arterial supply from the uterine artery, which is branch of the internal iliac artery, and from the ovarian artery, which is branch of the abdominal aorta. The cause of an ectopic pregnancy isn't it always clear. In some cases, the following conditions have been linked with the ectopic pregnancy. Inflammation and scarring of the fallopian tubes from a previous medical condition, infection, or surgery. Presence of intrauterine contraceptive device. Use of progesterone-based oral contraceptive. Hormonal factors. Genetic abnormalities. Birth defects. The treatment management for the ectopic pregnancy either be surgical or medical. Surgical management, including laparotomy and laparoscopic treatment of ectopic pregnancy, should be reserved for patients who refuse or have contraindication to medical treatment, those in whom medical treatment has failed, and those who are hemodynamically unstable. Between 1989 and 1992, three randomized studies conducted in the United States and Sweden have demonstrated that compared with the laparotomy, laparoscopic treatment of ectopic pregnancy is associated with the lower cost, shorter hospital stay, less operative time, less blood loss, less analgesic requirement to faster recovery. In addition, patients randomly assigned to laparoscopy also had fewer adhesion than patients treated with the laparotomy. For medical treatment, methotrexate, a folic acid antagonist, inhibits DNA synthesis in actively dividing cells, including trophoplast. Administrated to properly selected patients, it has a success rate up to 94%. Away from the serious clinical complication of ectopic pregnancy, these conditions ensure the fact that the conceptus can implant successfully in, into tissue other than normal endometrium. Continuous development can occur in various sites, however, it's usually terminated by a mechanical or vascular accident, not by fundamental nutritive or endocrine insufficiency or by a maternal immune response. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the subscribe and like button. This will support the channel. Share these videos with your colleagues and let me know in the comment below if you want to discuss a particular topic. See you in the coming video.